What's up, guys? Coming at you from Shenzhen for a quick video on psychological warfare, propaganda, manipulation, and all that kind of good stuff, uh, specifically in relation to the anti-China propaganda throughout most of Western media. A quick warning, I'm parked where there seems to be a couple of guys down there singing on a speaker. <laughs> I probably should have known better. I think they're there every morning. I'm not sure if you guys are going to be able to hear it, but if you can, whatever, maybe it will make some good background music. But uh, let's get on to the, into the topic. The first thing I want to talk about is the two main things that seem to be continually perpetuating the lies about China, and that is both reward and fear. I'm actually in the middle of a new book right now that's, that brings a lot of additional great context to this topic, and it's called The New Confessions of an Economic Hitman by John Perkins. In his book, he talks about the dominant system of economics, governance, and society today, which is driven by fear and the idea that your problems always come from somewhere else. This not only unifies a country, but it has great benefits to economic systems that rely on or profit from war and the exploitation of the world's resources, particularly from the global south. Western politicians now no longer are here to make your dreams come true. They're here to protect you from nightmares. And that often relies on first manufacturing those nightmares that they promise to protect you from. Politicians who don't do anything to improve your life, but who protect you from evils, manage to earn legitimacy. And I think this is exactly why during the Biden versus Trump campaigning, it oftentimes looked like a competition on who would put China in their place better than the other. This is actually also one of the reasons why Kennedy beat Nixon in 1960. Kennedy promised to stand up against the evils of communism and especially take care of the Cuba issue. And the irony of how the system worked allowed Kennedy to use far stronger language and far stronger words than Nixon, who, as vice president at the time, was already secretly planning an armed invasion of Cuba with CIA-trained Cuban dissidents. But he couldn't say anything about it because it was totally illegal. But finally, it did end up being Kennedy who followed through on it after he was elected in what is now known as the completely disastrous Bay of Pigs invasion. The other way that fear plays itself into systems like this is by blasting anyone who doesn't take enough of a stand against the enemy at that time. Uh, the enemy of our time is China. Whether it be blasting LeBron James for simply suggesting that Americans didn't have enough information on the Hong Kong situation to make a conclusion, or when Diane Abbott was recently intensely criticized for being on a panel with a journalist, Jin Jing Li from CGTN, who debunked some of the Cold War-like propaganda against Xinjiang, as naturally she would on a panel called Uniting Against Racism and the New Cold War. Diane Abbott quickly responded to the criticism by saying she made a huge mistake by joining a panel that had people who were genocide deniers, <laughs> ironically now becoming a puppet for Western Cold War propaganda almost immediately after leaving a no to Cold War panel. And if you really want to get an appreciation for how much of a puppet she became and to understand that her participation in the anti-China Xinjiang narrative was not from any sort of personal knowledge, but simply her parroting back what she needed to out of fear and obligation, she referred to the issue as Muslims in Uyghur being massacred. <laughs> there is no place called Uyghur, just in case you weren't aware. She has no idea about the situation, and she just knows instinctively to fall in line without actually knowing anything about the situation and without even bothering to look it up herself. Being scared into complying with propaganda is something that Western governments have always been good at, but they've actually been way more direct in the past. Back when the U.S. was trying to overthrow the Sandinista government in Nicaragua by illegally supporting the Contras, who were committing massive atrocities in their country, the American National Security Council had a system in place where any journalist who were reporting favorably on the Sandinista government would be accused of receiving services from Sandinista prostitutes. If they were gay journalists, they were accused of being provided gay Sandinista prostitutes. Today... It's, of course, far less elaborate than this. When you talk about the positives of China, you're simply called a CCP shill, and instead of requiring more conclusive evidence and more consequences for seeking the truth, like you'd expect after these historical references, the threshold seems to be lower, and people seem to require less and less. 
But what happened back during that time is really important to remember today in order to appreciate the level of manipulation that has always gone on and to identify when it looks like it's happening again. The propaganda machine that went into work to discredit the Sandinista government and anyone who said anything positive about them was extremely extensive. Walter Raymond Jr. was from the CIA Propaganda and Psychological Warfare Department, who initially focused on overseas efforts. However, the kind of psychological warfare that he specialized in was illegal for the CIA to use on their own people in America. And this is exactly why he first resigned from the CIA and moved over to a CIA cutout to deploy the U.S. government's Nicaragua propaganda. Now, here we are today with almost all of the overseas Uyghur NGOs also being funded by a CIA cutout, the National Endowment for Democracy, and a system is in place that strikes fear into anyone who dares say that the Xinjiang genocide narrative smells really fishy. And nobody's stopping to say, hang on a sec, guys, we've seen this before. CIA cutouts and military industrial complex backed NGOs like ASPI, the one I've spoken about before, are funding almost all of the organizations pushing the Uyghur genocide narrative. Millions of dollars is being pumped into this and hardly anyone is wiser to what this usually means despite the historical context that's available to us now. You're being played like you've always been played. And while the Chinese government, contrary to your belief, is actually delivering dreams to its people, raising hundreds of millions of people out of poverty, increasing the standard of living, creating a society where the upward mobility for the bottom 50% is better than anywhere else, and building infrastructure projects we could only dream of in the West, while they're doing all of this, you are participating in and perpetuating the system that allows you to be content with a system where your politicians do nothing for you, except protect you from the same nightmares that they first invent for you. I think it's time to wake up, world. And I'm with that, I think I'm going to keep this video really short and simple just to leave you a little bit of food for thought and to think a little bit more about what's going on. So with that said, I will see you guys in the next video. Take care and see you soon.